Hello everybody and welcome back. I just have to get something and it is exactly this here. This here is my old CNC and it's pretty filthy but it's a wonderful thing and I just Love it. Now this CNC machine uh, is probably one of the more simple things that I have. And uh, it's not great. It's not super built. It is just one of those tools uh, that have acquired the Swiss Army knife status. Um, I don't use this a lot. I haven't featured it in, um, in many videos now. Um, but when I need something to really quickly make a PCB board or engrave something or cut something from um, carbon fiber or so, this is where I go. And uh, it is just an extremely useful tool. And it's nothing more than that. Uh, it hasn't aged well. Uh, this motor um, now has a little bit of play in its bearing and uh, the, the tool holder, the chuck, uh, was never great, uh, not even from the start. And I always had some vibration um, in my cutting tools, so not great, but absolutely useful. And um, these tools are so, so, so simple. And I always wanted to have a slightly better one. And now I do. So, this box just arrived today. And if I'm not mistaken, then in here we're going to find an upgraded version of the CNC machine that I already have. And I am really, really happy that I've gotten this because uh, I got this from Banggood as a review unit and I've been asking for it for a long time and it was um, never available. And uh, let's see if we can get this open. Uh, it has been unpacked during shipping and I think the box has been damaged but um, there are no big holes in here nothing that would make it look like it's been damaged and uh, whoops I'm really 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 oh and it's well packed here we go. Oh, so maybe they opened it and put in the adapter. Huh, that could have been. So, quick peek. Because I don't think that uh, there's going to be much of a building this video. Uh, we do have in here, I hope you can see this. The CNC3 3018 Pro. And man, it looks good. So, we have big table. Uh, same, mostly standard frame from 20 by 40 extruded aluminium. The side panels are 20 by 20 aluminium. We have side covers, um, which are plexiglass or acrylic. We have, and this is where it gets great, an upgraded chuck, same motor, same stepper mount, basically same setup, but these parts are not 3D printed, they're injection molded. 
and they look they look the part. Uh, we got the same steppers that the other one has. In fact, they even seem a little bit heavier, nicer. And uh, it does come with a set of V-groove cutters and with a set of dual flute mills. It looks like dual flute. So, nice. Let's put it together and have at it. So, some more impressions from inside the box. Um, first of all, of course, the, the tool head. Wow, that looks really great. There are uh, two linear bearings in here on both sides. So, four in all, we have long linear bearings in here, um, which is going to reduce play. That was an issue with the other one. Not a big one, but uh, it was there. Uh, these acrylic parts are machined, not lasered. Really nice. Um, and uh, the standoffs um, are also injection molded plastic. It could even be cut extruded plastic. It's hard to say. So from a material standpoint, what an upgrade. We do get a pretty much standard uh, gerbil type controller. What's different about this one is now, this one comes with a front panel for offline printing. So you can download a print code uh, to an SD card and uh, print code. Yeah, I'm doing too many 3D printers. Uh, you, can do, you can download your G-code files to an SD card and um, use this for operating offline without any machine connected to it, any computer. That's really nice. And of course it comes with a nice box with all the parts you need and the tools you need to put it together. Yes. It does seem nicer than the one that I had before. So going through the manual, um, it's quite clean and uh, by the way those big parts are not um, plexi or acrylic they're Bakelite. Uh, big difference a lot harder and it won't shatter as easy and all the setup instructions are really simple um, easy to follow steps and uh, I suppose setting it up should be really easy to do.
now that the machine is all together, I want to spend just one or two minutes explaining a few things that I found out. Uh, first of all, uh, in my pack there was a mix-up of the colors uh, of the screws. Um, seemingly it just was that they ran out of the black screws and added silver ones. So the rest just came together um, the way it was uh, um, shown in the manual. The second thing is um, they're actually showing you in the manual that you're supposed to remove the spindle motor. <laughs> and yeah, do that because um, on mine the screws here aren't tightened and uh, I suppose that is exactly why they're showing you that. Um, also, uh, this here is a uh, pretty good chuck. Um, it's an ER11 and it's uh, I think good for up to um, six millimeters, five or six millimeters. Um, could even be more, but uh, they don't give you any more inserts. You're gonna have to go out and buy them yourself. Uh, but the important thing here is that you want to make sure that the uh, fastening screws um, are not only all the way in, but uh, that they're really, really tight. Because the chuck is just on um, the way they just, uh, well, hammered it on. It goes onto the motor shaft with quite a lot of force and um, I pulled it off a bit just to add some grease to the um, to the bearings at the end. There's a sleeve bearing um, on the top of the motor and there's a ball bearing um, on the side of the chuck and um, it's just good to have them uh, greased up with a little bit of ball bearing grease um, because it's going to extend the lifetime of uh, that bearing. Okay, and uh, then when you um, reinstall the motor, um, you will want to make sure that you move the uh, Z-axis all the way down and uh, that you make sure that you have enough room uh, between between the table and uh, and the chuck, uh, just to make sure that you have enough room. So when you go all the way up, you still want to be able to um, install your tools and to remove them. And uh, that will become more complicated, or the spacing will become more complicated uh, once you add some form of sacrificial material. But I'll get to that in a moment. So right now I'm just going to reinstall the motor and um, and I'm, I'm going to eyeball it so it um, it's properly mounted. Um, the second thing that is nice is there are some uh, um, some spacings in here so you can actually add a laser and it has the right um, the right spacing for that for the standard lasers and I think in a uh, coming video I'm going to try and install uh, this laser that I have here, which is, I think, a two watt um, infrared laser. So this should then be able to cut clear acrylic. And I really want to try this out with this machine. So let's install it. Now regarding uh, sacrificial materials, uh, the printer comes with uh, the standoffs that have the 8mm inserts and you can also buy your own, um, but you don't want to uh, mount your, uh, the things that you're working on directly to the aluminium plate all the time. And the easiest way to do this, if you're, for example, trying to mill um, some uh, PCB board or uh, maybe some carbon fiber board, uh, you will want to have a sacrificial just to make sure that you're not running into the aluminum table. Um, for things that you can just uh, fix down with double-sided tape, 
I usually go for this three millimeter plywood. Um, if I have something that I need to screw down and have done really well, I go for uh, 10 to 13 millimeters um, MDF. And uh, when you're set up, when you're setting up your uh, your motor, uh, you want to make sure that the distance between the two um, is sufficient for the work you're doing. So you may have to move uh, the motor up and down um, by by loosening it at the chuck and uh, just raising it and tightening tightening it back down again. And um, uh, this is something that you should take into account when you're setting up your machine. Um, I just wanted to say that. Uh, it is also very important, depending on the materials you're working on, like if you're working on aluminium, um, you will want to use a sacrificial material that, that does not burn, that just chars, um, like for example, MDF. And here's one last bit of advice that I would like to give you. Uh, as you can see, I mounted the controller board um, with some uh, distancers uh, from uh, wood, just just to make sure that it, that it mounts really. There aren't any uh, washers or spacers for this here. And uh, if I had them, I would have just used uh, three washers under here and it would have been fine. But what I really wanted to get at is um, when you're setting up your steppers and you find out that you have the steppers wrong, do not unplug any steppers um, that, are con that are connected to these controllers while there's power to the machine because it's going to kill them instantly. Um, this is really important. Now I've just powered on the machine and uh, no smoke escaped, uh, it just silently turned on and is now sitting here. The display did come to life and um, right now I just uh, went to the uh, through the control menu. I'll show the menu in a, in a few minutes and uh, I can now just control all the axes um, X, Y, Z and uh, what I'm now going to try and do, I've uh, mounted a uh, um, a drill or a cutting bit for that and um, I'm just going to move to all of the uh, edges and I'm going to try to ascertain if um, the table is in any way crooked to the um, X or Y axis and um, Usually that wouldn't be a problem because once you've set up your sacrificial um, you would use a cutter and you would just or a mill and you would just mill it down uh, completely to the same level. Um, but let's just find out if this thing is uh, level at all. So I'm going to try to go to the front position. Yeah, it's moving. Uh, I found that the that the setup that the stepper drivers come with is uh, pretty well tuned to the steppers that they're using here. And we can see it's still the same distance, it's not touching or moving away. Distance is still roughly the same. Uh, and in the back here, it is still approximately the same. Well, it's nice if you want to move 24 centimeters to the right, you just key in 24 moves.
I wonder if that was too much. Nope. And we seem to have a little bit more of the distance on that side. Let's see if that changes towards the front. No, that doesn't change. And uh, if there should be a, a large discrepancy, um, what we can do is we can open the screws um, right down here and try and adjust for that. So, um, since I haven't done any tuning on this machine and it's just basically sitting the way that uh, all the grooves and all the screws just pull it naturally, um, it's already pretty good. And we can, of course, turn on the spindle if we want to. And that just spins the motor. I am not sure that, that, the, that the way the spindle is centered is really good, um, but uh, we can try to find that out by just putting either, either a V-groove cutter or just, just a broken off shaft in there and uh, see if that has any vibration. Now, the controller thingamajig uh, is really, really small, and uh, the screen that it has is even smaller. Uh, but I have to say that um, I seem to be able to read it quite well. Uh, the SD card is in the front here, and um, it appears to be largely self-contained apart from that. Uh, you can go back if you hold the key on the lower right and then you have the options to control to select a file or to set some of the options of uh, the controller and um, basically that's it apart from that you have keys for the z-axis for the y-axis for the x-axis uh, for the spindle and uh, to change the mode or the menu <laughs> That's about it. And um, yeah, there's not much to it. And I don't know if you can get bigger ones. Um, I suppose you could. But uh, for what it is, I quite like it. Now before ending this video, I would actually like to um, leave you with some of the impressions that I had while building it. And, uh, of course, I will be making videos uh, about using it, but uh, this would make this video far too long. Uh, the first thing is, this thing is really super solid. It is quite heavy, and it leaves a very good impression uh, from the quality of the build and from the quality of all the parts that are among it. The second thing that uh, I noticed with this machine is just the amount of uh, detail that they went into to make this and uh, this sets the machine um, apart from the one that I had before and uh, it just it just gives this uh, slight impression of quality uh, and uh, even if it's just a cheap machine um, they did put in a reasonable effort to make it a good cheap machine. And lastly, I do think that the combination of, uh, of the parts that they chose at the price that they're basically selling it um, is really good. Uh, this controller um, seems to work out fine. Uh, the steppers are reasonably sized and if you don't like it you can use uh, bigger steppers and get bigger controllers and uh, you still have the choice to update. I know this is not the machine um, to start milling big pieces of aluminium or even steel, uh, but for working with carbon fiber for example or with PCB material or wood, this is perfectly adequate. Um, and uh, I think there's there are a lot of nice-to-haves on those machines, but uh, 
from from the basics um, this machine just has them and if you don't like it you can go out and uh, add whatever you need to make this machine more to your liking and the effort that they did is in my opinion really good on a side note I loved working with the uh, Bakelite parts um, and I know I'm I'm a little bit uh, more seasoned than others uh, but uh, working with old stuff that is made from Bakelite it has a very peculiar smell especially uh, when you're when you're drilling or screwing into it and if you're just touching it it gives off this very characteristic smell and I, I, I perfectly enjoyed that um, yeah I will be ending this video now um, next video will be coming out in a week or so and it will be about using the machine, um, doing some PCBs, uh, cutting maybe some um, carbon fiber parts, or maybe even trying to cut some aluminium. And um, we'll see how well the machine works, um, if it is easy to use, or, or if it has some shortcomings. But just putting it together and getting it to work um, was a lot of fun with this machine and um, the qu build quality is uh, way up there and it took me about I would say two and a half hours um, maybe a little bit longer with the slight confusion with the screws and stuff but um, uh, there was nothing missing it was just fun to put together and the instructions are very clear um, they're re really easy to follow so um, Right now this thing gets my thumbs up and uh, really looking forward to getting it to no closer and uh, starting to work with it because um, if it keeps going on like this I think this is my next Swiss Army knife. So thank you very much for watching and bye bye.